Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about and showing you everything uh, to do with trending markets. So identifying a trend, why traders uh, prefer to trade a trending market, how to draw um, a trend on a candlestick chart, um, everything to do with trending market environments. Now, there are two market states. You've got a market that moves, you know, uh, basically higher it moves lower or it's going to move sideways all right so that's three sorry well two meaning th these these would be what uh, would be considered trending market states so um up and down pretty much is a trending market state or sideways which is a ranging market state um so you know there's a there's two market states um that traders really will look to trade so um with a with a trending market um, prices will either move higher or they will steadily move lower and um, the reason why trending markets are so popular with uh, traders is because that's pretty much where the money is made if you think about a market that moves sideways um, and you buy let's say you buy here um, if you're buying at this price point a market and the market keeps moving sideways then how are you going to make any uh any profit you're not whereas if you're you know buying here and the market moves higher then obviously your um as price goes higher your profit goes up and that's the reason why trending markets are um considered uh basically by traders to be the best market state and market environment to make the most money so um the the, the downside to trending markets um, if you can call it a downside is that markets don't trend um a lot of the time in fact uh, markets will be in a range probably 60 to 70 percent of the time um, which means that markets trend probably 30 to 40 percent of the time so trying to find the trend isn't um, you know isn't as easy as it seems and uh, when we get on to how to identify and classify a trend um, you'll see sometimes how difficult and subjective it can be so um, let's uh, get rid of some of this stuff uh, da, 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 da. All right so markets um, when we're trying to identify a trend what happens is is that markets don't move up forever right so you might see a move that goes higher that is not a trending market um, a, a trending market technically on a, on a price chart is defined by um, certain rules so the rules are that what you'd want to see is a um, a low or what you would consider a low you'd want to see a move up right and this may be you know what you would consider a high prices will then pull back now um, this is due to buyers and really sellers so if you think about uh, the market is basically run by buyers and sellers it's supply and demand so when there's more demand than supply prices will move higher if there's more supply than demand uh, prices will move lower and um, buyers pretty much represent um, demand so th there is a lot of demand in the market Right, there's more demand there's more buyers than sellers in the market which basically pushes the market higher right then at some point as we know the market doesn't move up forever um, at some point buyers will stop buying and um, demand will become less because um, you know the sellers will now take over the market <clears throat> right so when there's more supply than demand um, prices will then fall now the buyers demand are looking for um, an area with which to try and take control of the market again so this move here right is usually referred to as uh, you know a pullback or it could be referred to as a retracement there are some other um, 
uh, terms as well. But um, the most popular and most common um, terms for when prices, uh, you know, basically after a move up and they, you know, come down is what people would refer to as a pullback or a retracement, right? So prices are retracing, which means that the sellers are probably in control. Supply, there's more supply than demand. And then the buyers, right? So demand looks to buy again, right? They look to buy again um, at some point. Now, we don't know where prices will, um, you know, retrace from. Um, but once we see prices then start to make a move higher, right? And take out this high because we're trying to identify a trending market. So we don't know whether prices are trending, prices will pull back. So the first thing is a low to a high, then we have a retracement, right? That's the, that's the second step. And the third step is for price to basically go above the high, yeah? And so that becomes a, what we would call a higher high. Right, because this high is higher than this high. And once prices break through and make a new high, right, so the, the high becomes higher than this high, this retracement point here is now defined as a higher low. Because we have a low and we have a higher low, right? This low is higher than this low. So we'll go over that again. Prices move up, prices pull back or retrace. This is not a trend. We don't identify this as a trend, right? So that would be the high and that would be the low. As soon as prices break a Above this high, and when I say break above, so it has to basically just go above that level there. Technically, that is defined as a higher high. And as soon as we identify a higher high, this now is defined as a higher low. If prices do not go above this high here, then we cannot consider this to be a higher high, and we cannot consider this to be a higher low. So let's say, for example, prices did not make a new high, and they basically, you know, went as high as here. We, this is not a trend. This is not a trending environment, because what we could have is prices go up, come down, and then you know, enter a range or even a downtrend, which I'll get into in a sec. But we cannot define prices um, or the market as being in a trend until this move has happened, right? So we got move up, move down, move up. So if you were looking at, um, you know, maybe identifying this via numbers, you know, this may be your high, maybe the first move, this is the second move, and then this is the third move. Yeah, so we want to see this pattern within the market before we consider the market to be in. And I mean, I know I've been saying that it's in a trending market, but um, a potential trend. Whenever we talk about um, uh, uh, any concept, um, in trading, it's usually or it should be taken as uh, a potential because we're always dealing in probabilities in the market, right? So the probabilities of the market being in a defined trend is higher when we have a higher high being made and we see this price pattern, this one, two, three move. Doesn't mean that we definitely are in a trend and it doesn't mean that, you know, you should definitely start, you know, trading the trend because as you'll see, and I'll show you later, 
the market um, can um, it, do, it does things that will make you think that you're in a trend and you're not. So we're dealing with probabilities here. The probability of you being in a trend is um, is high, and this is how trends are defined. Yes, but it doesn't mean that we are a hundred percent in a trend. So we've just looked at um, a trending market when it trends higher right so we've got um, the first sign of a trend is um, when it makes higher highs and higher lows now in a downtrending market <clears throat> in a downtrending market um, we want to see the opposite so we want to see um, lower highs and lower lows so what is a lower high and lower low the same principles apply but we're just in it's just in reverse so we want to see a high. We want to see a low, right? So this is not a trend. Um, we see a retracement. So this would be our first move, move number one. Then we want to see a trace, a retracement or a pullback. And this would be considered move number two. Now, until prices break below or make any new low, right? So if prices make a new low, this would be considered, I'll just draw it to extend, a lower low, right? So a lower low obviously is lower than this low. Once prices make a lower low and once prices um, go below and make basically make a new low then this is now considered a lower high all right so we've got a high we've got a lower high we've got a low we've got a lower low now we are potentially in a um a downtrending market so the probabilities are in our favor that this is going to continue to the downside, right? And the market basically moves in waves um, and you'll start to see and we'll, we'll go over why markets move in waves as well. So um, we will basically identify a, uh, a, a, a downtrend with a high, a low, a retracement, a new lower low is made. So this is move number three. And once we make a new lower low, then we can define that this is the lower high. And again, it's the same concept because if prices do something like this, but they don't make a new low, then we cannot consider this to be a lower high. That is not a lower high until prices break through and make a new low so a lower low right because that was the previous low we look to the left and we see that prices have made a lower low so this is now the lower high as this was the high so when we're on alert um, and we're trying to identify trends, this is the beginning stages, the absolute beginning stages of a, uh, a downtrend. And obviously with higher lows and higher highs being made, um, we go on alert when um, uh, if we're looking for an uptrend. So once we identify a trending market or a potential trending market environment, um, how do we capitalize from this, right? So let's clear the chart. How do we capitalize and how do traders try to jump on and capitalize from the trend? Now we we'll go back to a, um, an uptrending market environment. All right, so we've got our high, our lower high, and our higher high. So once this pattern has been established, 
how can we and how can traders uh, take advantage of this um, this move? So what traders will do is they will wait for another retracement. Remember we had a retracement here and that was our first retracement. So what you're gonna do now is wait for, and what traders will do is wait for a second retracement, right? So they wait for a second retracement. Now, the best place for traders to get in and start buying would be an area of um, potential activity. And if you've watched our video, or my video on um, support and resistance, you will understand that support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. Now, when prices moved up to this level here and made this new high and was rejected and supply took over, this became a potential level of resistance, right? So we weren't sure whether prices were going to, you know, react at this level here and it didn't react maybe the way that we wanted to react and prices went through, right? So what happens is, is aggressive traders will look at this level and they will project into the future. And the rule is that resistance becomes support. So this is potential resistance. And then they will look to enter and look to the past and see if that level was a level of um, activity. So you might have had a level where here was a level of resistance, right? Because the more times this level has been uh, used in the past, um, traders will have their eye on that level so if that was the first touch that was the second touch that might have been obviously a confirmed level of resistance prices didn't hold now the aggressive trader again we're dealing with probabilities here um, may want to enter and take a you know a position a buy position here right to take advantage of the trend hoping that it's going to move higher Right, so there's a conservative approach as well where traders will wait for price to come down, they won't buy here, they may look for prices to retest and confirm this level as being a level of support because we don't know that this is going to be support again. We're dealing with probabilities, so we want to see prices <coughs> come down here again um, for the conservative trader and then prices move higher before traders decide to buy. So support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. This is what we refer to and uh, traders refer to as market structure. So the structure of the market um, uh, is being held, right? Um, so this is how traders take advantage of a potential trend, right? So let's get rid of this again. And I'll go over it. Let's go over it one more time, right? So this would have been a higher high. Now, when prices pull back, you want to look to see a level that has been historically tested or used as support or resistance and then look to buy at that level, hoping in the hope that the market will continue trending higher, right? So this being the higher high and now this being the new high, so that now becomes the higher high this now gets defined, this level here, and this retracement level gets defined as a, uh, sorry, higher low. Sorry, this is not a lower high. This is a higher low. And then we want to see prices retrace back into where? 
a level of potential resistance, which is the previous higher high. And then we look for prices to go higher. Retracement into the previous level, which was a higher high and prices stair step their way up. So in effect, what you're seeing is the market do something like this and the market moving in waves and basically obeying the laws of market potential market structure right um so look at it as kind of like you know scaffolding if you know what scaffolding is it's just support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support and we'll look at this in a downtrend so prices move higher prices retrace prices move higher prices retrace back into where a previous level which is a previous high which acted as resistance when prices broke through we look to the left of the chart historically and see if this level had been used as a level of resistance where price had been rejected if it had then aggressive traders will look to enter at this level here aggressive traders look to enter on the first touch conservative traders will wait for the level to be touched a second time and with prices move higher then they will look to enter long so that's how traders will take advantage of a trend now trends aren't perfect so uh, let's go back a bit so when we talk about um, you know the market making higher highs and higher lows the market could do something like this. Right? The market doesn't necessarily have to make a new high after um, you know, making a high and a retracement. We could see the market do something like this and then go higher. We are still stair-stepping our way up and we are still in a trend so i'll do it from the uh from the downside right so in a downtrend what you want to see is prices from a high from an identified high to a low prices pull back prices make a new low or a lower low now this becomes the lower high and then what traders would do is wait for a retracement into a level so they will look to see where the low is or the previous low this was a potential area of support and we know that support potentially becomes resistance so the aggressive trader will look to enter in the hopes of if this is a strong trend to the downside that prices will continue lower conservative traders may not trust this move and wait for confirmation of this level and wait for prices to start moving lower before they enter so we're waiting for lower highs and lower lows again once prices break past this level then this becomes a lower high and this would be the confirmed lower low if we don't if prices don't continue to make new lows and lower lows then this cannot be considered a lower high so in a downtrend it's all about looking for the structure and structures of the market potential support levels now turning to potential resistance so what we're going to do is we're going to look at examples of these on a candlestick chart so this is the uh, candlestick chart of the us dollar swiss franc pair on the daily time frame chart now when we are drawing trends looking for, for a downtrend in a perfect world we would want to see you know something like this prices stair stepping down 
like that, right? Uh, like what I previously drew, uh, it's not the best, but um, what I previously drew on the whiteboard. Now in real life, prices don't always work like that. In fact, um, it's, it's a rarity, but the concept is still the same. So is the market making lower highs and lower lows, or is it making higher lows and higher highs? And in this example, we can see prices make a new low, they retrace, they make a low, it retraces, makes a low, price retraces and makes a new low. Now, um, the same thing would obviously happen in an uptrend. Um, you won't get the perfect uptrend. So you won't get something that pulls back and then you might get a move like that, obviously. But as we stair step our way up, will prices always come back into a level of previous uh, resistance and now turn support no um, and this is what makes trading uh, trends a bit difficult and if everybody was doing the same thing everybody would be making money and we know that 90% of people uh, or traders that attempt to trade uh, don't make money in the market so but again the principle is the same so if you can spot that the market is making lower highs and lower lows, then you know you're in a trending environment. It's a different question when you're talking about actually trying to enter on, you know, a in a trend, right? So textbooks would show us, and let's clear this. And also I wanna get into probably uh, trend changes as well. So if we were looking to Enter right, so we would have that would be our low, then we would have some sort of retracement. So now we would have um, this level would be our absolute low, right? So until prices make a new low, which they did on this candle, now we would be looking for some sort of retracement to back into. Um, what would be considered, if this was support, it'd be considered resistance. Now, if you watched our and uh, my video on support and resistance, you know that support and resistance is drawn as a zone, right? So this would have been the zone. And once prices broke through, came back up into the zone, you can now see um, where traders actually entered to the short side, right? So, but you wouldn't be able to spot that necessarily. Um, it wouldn't be as obvious to brand new traders, right? Like yourselves watching this video. Um, this is why trend trading can be uh, quite difficult and quite subjective. There are rules involved and the rules do work, but they're not as obvious as, you know, me just saying, okay, you know, lower highs, lower lows, and then, you know, you're waiting for a clear move back up into the level. Yes, now that I've pointed that out, because when before I, what I did was I did this was the move here, here, and then that would have been clear for everybody to see. So if we were then looking at levels to get short, you can see that prices did come up into the zone, did react, and it actually did sell off, right? So technically, we still do have um, a, another selling opportunity here because we did go lower but we didn't the trend didn't follow through as we would have liked at that same you know at that same point now this leads me on to the point of um trend changes right now a trend change one sec let me just clear everything off this so now a trend change if we are making lower lows 
and textbook lower lows and lower highs, right? Now, if you've identified this level to be the lower high and this level to be a level of structure, prices can go past this level, but until they break the lower high, until they break past this level, this could just be a very deep retracement. Because prices, again, I think I explained it before, that prices could come up into this level here, right? Not make, not break above this level, and then maybe go down. Trends are never perfect in the market, in the candlestick market, and you'll see um, with um, some future examples why that is. Um, but know that just because we have, um, you know, basically broken above what is considered a support and where traders would necessarily try and buy, they try and, um, or sorry, I should say sell in this area. Aggressive traders will try and sell in this area in the hope that prices will move down. Remember, we're dealing with probabilities. We don't know that the trend will follow through. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Again, this is a probabilities game. So um, the aggressive trader may have lost the trade depending on where they've put their stop loss. Um, and if the market moves higher, right, the market can move higher and then continue to go down. Does that mean that we've, we've, we're, we're ending on an uptrend? We're not ending on an uptrend. We've just basically had a deeper retracement or a deeper pullback. And then the prices still continue to move lower, right? Because you're looking at this from the right hand side of the screen. We have no idea what is going to happen in the future, right? But what we do know is that if this is an identified lower high, if prices do not break above this lower high, then we are still in a considered downtrend. If prices do break above this high, and let me just uh, get rid of this. If prices do break above this high or this lower high, then we may consider the trend to have changed because now this level has been violated, the actual uh, down move. So this move here where you've got the high, the low, the uh, lower high and the lower low. Now we don't know what this is. We have no idea what to call this level here. So because we don't know what to call this price action, this move to this high here, now we consider the downtrend as being over. It's over until proven otherwise. And the same thing would apply to a rising market. So let's say, for example, we have right, low, right. And then if prices come down here, because this would be what we'd consider the higher low, this would be considered the higher low. If prices then violate this area here, the higher low area, then the uptrend potentially and most likely is off until proven otherwise because we don't know what price is going to do here. So price could do something like this and then actually enter a downtrend. So when we're looking at, and let's go back to the chart, when we are looking at trends, right? While they're not perfect on the candlestick chart, until prices would have broken above an identified and obvious level swing level, we wouldn't know whether, um, well, we consider this to be in a downtrend. And again, it's very, um, trading could be subjective to you. So if I was to go back to this example, 
right? This example may have been considered a swing here, right? So we had a low, prices were traced back up, prices came back down, right? Now, here, if this is your considered level, and that is what you would consider your lower high, prices came back up in, prices came back down, and then once price broke above here, you may consider this now to be the trend to be over. That's it, the trend is over, we don't know because now we've made a low, high, and now we're potentially making new highs. And we could be entering a new trend. This is why trending markets um, are very subjective to the trader and why trading trends can be quite difficult. But what I would say is look for the obvious swings. So look for where price is obvious. Yes, you will have minor levels inside of um, major levels, but look for the obvious structures. Right? Don't look for maybe the more detailed structures. Look for the ones that everybody is looking at. This is an obvious high or lower high. This is an obvious lower low. So until prices break an obvious um, level, then we are still in a downtrend. The more experienced you get in trading is the more you'll be able to spot these little, um, you know, uh, the, the, the intricacies of these, um, I suppose these uh, the more detailed lower highs and lower lows and higher lows and higher highs. But for now, what you wanna do is stick to the obvious levels and the obvious swings, right? And um, so if we were looking at that, this would be, you know, the obvious move. Low, lower high, low retracement, back down in, coming back, and then back in, all right? So, a trend change is really when prices will break above or what you consider price to break above an obvious level. Does that mean that the prices, if prices do come up here and then they can't continue going lower again and make new lows? No, again, we're always dealing with probabilities and the probabilities within the market, but you just wanna be on alert of a potential uh, uh, change in the trend if you are trend uh, trading. It's a bit of a uh, tongue twister there. So let's look at another example and find some more examples um, in the market of a potential uptrend. So in this example on the Australian dollar, US dollar, uh, four hour chart, 240 minute chart, we can see that prices have been making, um, basically been trending, you know, higher, right? So now what you wanna do as a trend trader is look uh, to identify um, where the higher highs and higher lows are. So as I'm drawing these, matter of fact, um, I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. So you'll see prices make a new high, come down. Now, we don't know that this is a potential trend until prices break above that area right there. As soon as prices break above, now this becomes the new high or the higher high. And once we define a higher high, we have to define a higher low. So this would be the higher low. Now, what trend traders are then doing is they're looking for areas with which to get in on the upside. So if we zoom in, 
zoom in a bit right so as you can see prices do come back down into what would be considered that was the previous high and let's just do this as the low so prices did come down in to this area here and then you had retracement the retracement come down in and then prices you know came in the aggressive trader maybe bought there the um, conservative trader ended up buying here and then prices moved to the upside now we didn't get a new high until here right so if this was our higher low and our defined higher low then we went into a sideways market um, and this wouldn't have been considered a higher low and why wouldn't this been considered a higher low not a higher low and this is because prices did not make a new high right so prices did not break above this level or go above this higher higher so we cannot consider this to be a higher low so this now becomes a higher low because we know that this was higher than this low and then once prices make a new high and prices break above and this becomes now the higher high and just as a note the higher high is usually always moving until it makes a retracement so as soon as price broke above here and prices spiked above that's a high that's a high that's a high and then you know new highs are being made and then you can see as prices do come back down into this zone um, you've got the aggressive traders that try to that try to get in a bit early prices did react and prices came you know down but now if this is our identified higher low from this move here so now we've got higher low and then we have that level there so let's get rid of here right so now we're still in a trend until this higher low is broken so if prices do come back into this level here or if prices did come back into this level here and maybe broke below it or spiked below it then we would consider the trend to be over right does that mean that we're not gonna you know buy around this level if we're looking to be a buyer then we would still buy here right it just means that we're entering more of a ranging market state and what we consider like i said trend trading we may not want to look or we want to maybe look to another market which has a clearer defined trend so until prices break this higher low we don't consider ourselves well we consider ourselves in a trend and if prices did spike below our defined higher low level then we may want to um, adjust our view on whether the market is in a uptrend as we can see prices oh sorry wrong one prices once prices broke above then we considered us to be in a trend or the market to still be in a trending environment and prices you can see there's a bit of a shallow pullback here and then prices break above so now this becomes the higher low and that would have been probably the higher high so we get a move from here all the way up and in fact once that brick broke and became a new high this level here down here would become the higher low right so we've got higher 
low. I hope you follow me on that one, right? So as soon as a new higher high is made, this becomes a higher low. Prices broke down, retraced, prices made a new high. Once a new high is made, this now becomes a higher low and then we wait for prices to make the higher high and then retrace. So we wanna see an obvious retracement, right? So we're still in the trend, we're still in the trend. This is our defined higher low. So until prices break down and go below this area here, we're still considered to be in an uptrend. Prices came down, prices went sideways for a bit. And until prices now go above this level, we can't, this is gonna be our higher low until we make a new high. Once price has made a new high, this now becomes our higher low. So that's a higher low. That's, oh. All right, let's get rid of those. All right. So that's our higher low. This is our higher high. And then if traders were looking to capitalize from this area, you can see that prices do come down into this previous resistance, 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 now turns to support. You can start to see traders look to buy in this area, prices go higher, all right? So I hope um, you you weren't too confused and uh, it's uh, clear, but the market is never 100% clear. You will never, uh, you know, see prices create the perfect higher high and higher low for too long. Um, you know, you get one or two moves, but as you can see in real life, um, you know, prices will spike below levels um, and they will go into ranging markets and then possibly go into downtrending markets. But when you're plotting levels um, and higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows, just understand that the market is not perfect and that um, as long as you stick to the obvious levels and the principles of trend trading, you should be okay when following the trend. Will you capitalize on every move? Chances are not, you know, you won't. But as long as you do follow, you know, my examples and, you know, get your eye in for it, practice, um, back test, go through your charts, see where levels have been violated, see where the trend has possibly gone into a ranging market or potentially even into a downtrending market in the opposite way. Um, and it's something that you need to practice a lot uh, before you start to see uh, certain patterns start to emerge and areas of where you may want to try and take advantage of the trend and where you shouldn't be taking advantage of the trend but the higher high higher low principle and the lower light lower high and lower low principle is the same uh, just follow the um, the principles when you're trend trading um, hopefully that helps and um, if you do have any questions uh, just email me my name Leon Rowe on info at trading180.com